mailbag time. Let's see what we've got here. I think you've got a view item here. We'll see. I'll give you links down below for things if I can give you links for them. It's rubber covers. Now, I've been getting some little bits recently, and they've all been coming for this model train stuff. So these little rubber boots go over bulbs. I think there's a three millimeter bonds. Yeah, I think there's a three millimeter ones. Bulb covers. Mix of solvents. So you need to do illumination, like backlighting, or like replacing bulbs or LEDs. You could use these. I bought a few different colours recently and a few different sizes and things like that, and I think that's the last one I needed. Plugs. Plugs. Now in New Zealand, you have to shop and try and buy these. They're relatively expensive. I got these on AliExpress, which are probably exactly the same as the ones you get in the shop. And uh, they look just as good. And these were a fraction of the price. I can't remember exactly what it was now, but it's it was um, cheap enough to make me buy five of them. You wouldn't think that buying a mains plug would be a big issue, would you? But no, no, no. Everything in New Zealand is expensive, right? New Zealand is an expensive place to buy things. Everything is horrendously priced. The markup on various things are horrendously high. And we're basically taking advantage of because it's a bit of an isolated market here. What we pay over here is more than we should. For example, I think if I bought one of these plugs from a retailer, I think it is something like 10 or 15 dollars, something like that. I think it was something that high. Yeah, I think I got all of these for 10 dollars, something like that. 15 dollars for the whole lot rather than just one. It was something like that kind of markup. Gives you an idea. So, an idea for projects, something I want to build and it involves barrel jacks. These are 2.5mm barrel jacks. There's 2.1, 2.5. The difference is that size of that pin there. The other is the same at 5.5, but the inner pin is 2.5mm on these, which means they can handle slightly higher currents. And these look like they're fairly robust. I've shown plastic ones before, which are like 2.1mm, but I want to get something very different to what I've already got. I could get exactly the same style on 2.5, but then you can go, okay, which one's which? So I've got some which are obviously different, and so I know these ones are 2.5s. So these are some more Bamboo Lab printer parts. I've got these thinking I might need them. I mean, I don't know if I ever went to, even will need them. But it's one of those things, it's like, yeah, okay, I'll get them now, then I've, at least I've got some. Although it's something to get actually come on the printer. The idea of this is on the printer, there's a little bed. It's actually attached to the, the hotbed. And so it's sitting like this on the bed. And the nozzle actually wipes across it to clean itself. It's part of the startup sequence. And obviously it's going to wear out eventually and you need to replace it. So it did actually come with a couple as well, a natural printer pack that came with it, or a toolbox. There were some in there, I think it's like three. I thought I'll get a few more. Of course, in fact, now I've got six more in here. It will probably never wear out and it will probably never fall off. And in here is a nozzle. It comes just back. It's a 0.2mm nozzle. Now I showed a different 0.2mm nozzle before. That was an original Bamboo Lab one. This is not an original Bamboo Lab one. I don't believe anyway. I think it's a aftermarket version. This is a hardened steel. I think the other one I got was stainless steel. Yeah. The other one I've got a stainless steel, this one's hardened steel. This is the hardened steel version, which is needs a heck of certain materials sometimes. Parts which I may or may not ever use. That's a USB C to USB A cable. Looks like about 30 centimetres. This is another one, it looks like about 2 metres. Another one. Yep, another one, about 30 centimetres, and that one looks like about a metre. So, yep, yeah, USB A and USB C cables, so it's got a few different ones there. It's 25, 1 metre, 2 metres, yeah, you look at that, I was right, and 25 again, yeah. So, that's good. I needed one of these cables through the motorhome for putting in that duper unit, which I showed previously. I think it might be last month, I'm not quite sure. Depends how I'm going to sequence these, I'm not sure yet. But currently, I've got quite a long cable on there, and I just wanted a little short cable. Just this one here to tidy it up. And I thought, well, if I'm going to get one, I might as well get a few because I haven't got enough. So, there's those. USB C's. And then we've got this box, which is completely covered in tape, so I'm going to have to use an actual knife on this one. Oh, so that's enough. And I've got some wire. So, these pre made terminals are useful. Now, 
This is also for the motorhome. I've upgraded the inverter recently to a much more powerful one. Not continuously, but the peak is about three times powerful than the one which I did have in there. And the continuous power is about 50% more. I need some more grunty cables and stuff that's in there. 50mm square. These are just the right size. And I've got some shorter ones here, shorter lengths for doing some interconnections between circuit breakers and, and rails and stuff like that. I've got some slightly longer cables as well. One meter, two gauge. So this is a centimetre as well, so a bit high. Next time I have that equipment apart, I mean it's all together right now and it's all working fine. I've used it with four gauge, um, so this is like the next size up. And four gauge is like 35 square mil. Currently got a 35 millimetre square cable in there for most of it. I've got a couple of larger pieces in there as well, as I've got them, but um, I want to upgrade to 50 mil square because that's a better size for it. You would think it wouldn't even matter, but yeah, it can do when you're dealing with high currents. Putting 150 amps out of it, then you need a bigger cable. And the last thing, which is what I think is a review item. Pretty sure it is. Not 100% sure, but pretty sure. It is. These are from Zotec. USB mount soldering iron. Two of them. Okay, got some instruction stuff in there. These aren't the same, they're actually slightly different. Here we go. Zoe Zitty N1. Here we go. Oh, it's got like a. Oh, you turn it. Okay, so you've got a tip in there. This one's got USB-C power on it, so that's that one. So this one's actually different, it's not the same. They said they sent me two. I actually asked specifically the two of them, because I've actually got use cases for these. And this one's a bit different. You see it's got some test leads in here, which is a bit weird, isn't it? This one is the N2. This one is a soldering arm. This one's more than just that. It's got a multimeter built into it. <laughs> so, I'll be doing reviews on both of these irons. Gotta be careful not to mix things up. So, watch out for that. That should be interesting. Subscribe if you already subscribed. If you want to see what these are and how they work. Different form factor, slightly different. And uh, check that out. Should be interesting. Other videos down here to watch. And click over there on the Patreon link if you want and become a channel supporter. Only a couple of dollars a month is all it can take. That's the lowest tier, it's two dollars a month. If you can spare two dollars a month to help support the channel, help me buy things like this to make videos about and show you things that are out there and bits and pieces, please do. Thanks a lot Zotec for sending these to me to review and I'll be doing that very soon. Ciao.